guys, welcome back to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today I'll be sharing with you a very popular Greek dessert known as kokakia. They're, they're little mini sponge cakes that are filled with pastry cream. The tops are dipped in chocolate. They're beautiful, elegant, and so delicious. They look like little mini cream puffs, but they're not. They're actually little cakes, and they're very similar to, a boss, to little mini Boston cream pies. If you ever have them, these are so good. They're perfect for your next dinner party. They have a few steps. So first, we're going to begin by making the pastry cream, which we've done so many times on here. Let's go over those ingredients so we can start. I have four eggs. We're just going to be using the yolks today. A little bit of heavy cream. This is a quarter cup. Some salt. A tablespoon of unsalted butter. Pure vanilla extract. Granulated sugar. This is three quarters of a cup a quarter of a cup of cornstarch, also known as corn flour, and two cups of milk. So to my saucepan, I'm going to add the milk, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and I'm going to add half of the sugar. Give it a whisk. And I'm going to let that cook over medium-high heat until it becomes scalding hot and almost comes to a boil. In the meantime, I'm going to separate the eggs. All we're using are the yolks today. To the egg yolks, I'm going to add the cornstarch the remaining granulated sugar, and the heavy whipping cream. And I'm just going to whisk it all together until it's smooth. So once the milk is scalding hot, go ahead and pour at least half of it into the egg mixture. Continue to whisk it so that way the temperature rises. That's called tempering the egg. Now we could add this back to the saucepan. And I'm going to cook this over medium heat, whisking it continuously until it's nice and thick. Once you see those first bubbles coming up and it comes to a boil, it should thicken immediately. So take it off of the heat and then go ahead and add the butter and a teaspoon and a half of pure vanilla extract and whisk it all together. When that vanilla hits this cream, it smells heavenly. And now just in case there are some lumps of any kind inside of there, we want the pastry cream to be super smooth. So we're just gonna pass it through a strainer. You see how smooth that is? I'm gonna cover it with a piece of plastic wrap touching the pastry cream. The, the plastic wrap should touch the pastry cream and that's to prevent a skin from forming. If you're wondering why I put the pastry cream into such a large bowl, is because I want it to cool completely. I want it to cool as fast as possible. If you're making this a day before, that's perfect. You can actually do that. Let it come to room temperature, then store it in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it the next day. I'm gonna set this aside and as soon as it cools, I'm gonna, as soon as it cools, I'm gonna pop it in the freezer because I don't have another batch ready. Now we're going to move on to making the syrup. For the syrup, it's a very simple, it's a very simple, simple syrup. We're making a vanilla flavored simple syrup with a cup of granulated sugar, a cup of water, and you can use a squeeze or a tablespoon of your favorite citrus. You can use lemon or orange, clementine, whatever's in season. We're going to let this come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil and the sugar is dissolved, we're going to take it off the heat and I'm going to stir in a teaspoon of pure vanilla extract and let it cool completely. So next we're going to make the little mini sponge cake. So you're going to line two baking trays with parchment paper. Then you're going to find something that's round and that measures two inches in diameter. I have this little biscuit cutter. You could use a cookie cutter, a little jar or glass, whatever you have that measures two inches. Then you're going to draw little circles on both of the parchment papers. On each one, if you're using a half sheet, or a regular cookie tray, then you should fit 30 circles on each one. So you could have a total of 60. This makes 30 little kokakia, so you're gonna need the tops and the bottoms. That's why you're going to need uh, 60. So you're gonna draw the circles on the parchment paper, then you're gonna flip the paper over so whatever ink you're using, whether it's the pencil or marker, does not transfer onto the little sponge cakes. To make the sponge cake batter, we're gonna need six eggs that we're gonna separate. And the dry ingredients, we have some all-purpose flour, some baking powder, salt, and some cornstarch, also known as corn flour granulated sugar, and pure vanilla extract. I'm going to separate the eggs. I'm going to put the whites in one bowl and the yolks in another. So we're going to begin by whipping up the egg whites. We're going to whip them on high speed until they're nice and foamy. Then I'm going to add half of the granulated sugar in here and continue to whip them until they form stiff peaks or until a meringue forms. It takes about three to four minutes on high speed for the uh, meringue to be ready. What you're going to be looking for is for it to make stiff peaks just like this. You want it to be nice and thick. Set that aside. Now we're going to work on the egg yolks. So to the egg yolks, I'm going to add the remaining granulated sugar and the vanilla extract. 
And I'm going to put it on the mixer and whisk it at high speed until it's nice and thick and creamy. It's going to turn a pale yellow. That's how, you're, that's how you'll know it's going to be ready. It's going to take about three, four minutes for that to happen. So I did say that you could use the same whisk without washing it that had the egg whites on it to whisk up the yolks. But if you started with the yolks, then you'd have to wash it before whisking up the whites. If there's any kind of fat or oil or grease in the bowl or on the whisk, when you start whisking up the whites, they will not turn into meringue. That's why we always start with the whites first and then the yolks, that out of the way, that said. I'm just gonna combine all of the dry ingredients together. Just gonna whisk them up. So it is best to pass them through a strainer or a sieve. Mine is dirty because I strain the pastry cream with it and it's still wet. So I'm just going to add it carefully to the yolks when the time comes. I'm going to lighten up the yolk mixture with about a third of the meringue. And I'm going to add the dry ingredients, which is the flour, in a few batches until I'm going to add a little bit at a time. Once each batch is incorporated, then I'm going to add the next. Do not over mix it and do that on low speed. And the flour doesn't have to be 100% incorporated because we're still going to add the remaining uh, egg whites in here. So you do not want the mixture to overmix. Then you're going to end up with tough and dry uh, sponge cake. You want it to be nice and light. Now I'm going to add the remaining egg whites in here and let them whisk together on low speed until they're all incorporated. And then take the bowl off of the mixer and just go ahead with your spatula and just fold everything all together one last time. So if anything is stuck to the bottom or the sides of the bowl, everything is evenly incorporated. Now it's time to pipe out the little mini uh, sponge cake. So what we're gonna do, I have a pastry bag. I don't have a tip attached to it. I just cut the tip off so that way the batter passes through evenly. But if you do have a tip, you're gonna need a big round tip. That's gonna be fine. You don't want anything that has a star tip or anything like that because you want these to be nice and smooth. And I like to put the pastry bag in a large glass so that way it holds easily and it's easily to transfer the batter in here. Depends on the size of your pastry bag how much batter is gonna go in here, but the general rule of thumb is to not fill it more than three quarters of the way full. Otherwise, while you're piping the batter out, it's gonna start spilling out from the back end and you, you're, then you're gonna have a big mess on your hands. So do this in a few batches. It's better than just having to clean up a ginormous mess. And make sure that your oven is preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. That is good. And now we have these little guides that we cut out the little circles. And now we're gonna pipe out little circles. The best way to do it is just to hold it in the center. And once the circle is full, go ahead and remove it or lift it up. So you're gonna wanna do a better job than I did when you're drawing your circle so that way they're evenly spaced out. These are going to rise a little bit when they're going to bake, so you want to leave a little bit of room in between. So I piped out 60 little circles for the little sponge cakes for the kokakia, and there was still some batter left over. So you can pipe out more circles if you want, because these do freeze well. I put the trays in the oven, and they're going to bake for 15 minutes. I'm going to flip them halfway through, so I'm going to put the bottom the tray that's on the bottom rack on the top rack and the tray that's on the top rack on the bottom rack halfway through at about the eight minute mark so that way they bake evenly because I do not have a convection oven and then once they're golden all around then you want to take them out it's going to take about 15 minutes let them cool completely then we're going to move on to the next step the mini sponge cakes are out of the oven they took 15 minutes to bake as they cool we're going to move on to making the last and final part of this recipe which is the ganache we're going to take six ounces of semi-sweet chocolate you can use milk chocolate dark chocolate or a combination of whatever your favorite is pour three quarters of a cup of scalding hot heavy cream over the chocolate Add a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract and a teaspoon of vegetable oil. You could even use light olive oil. Whisk it all together until it's nice and smooth and a velvety dark ganache is formed. Set it aside. Now we're going to put everything all together. After about five minutes, the sponge cakes will be cool enough to handle. Go ahead and flip them over. So take them off of the parchment paper and flip them over, but keep them on their baking tray so that way you know which is which. Half of them are going to be for the bottom and the other half are going to be for the top. Go ahead and brush them all generously with a cool down simple syrup. This is going to help them stay nice and moist. Brush the flat side only. Then go ahead and whip up the pastry cream a little bit. Whisk it up with a spoon or with a whisk so it lightens up a bit. It does tend to thicken once it cools. Then transfer it into a pastry bag that's, that has a star, a big star tip at the bottom of it because that's going to help the pastry cream be very decorative once we pipe it out. 
pipe some pastry cream on half of the, of the sponge cake rounds, and then the other half, you wanna dip the tops, the dome-shaped part, into the ganache, into the chocolate ganache, and then place it on top of the pastry cream. Now your kokakia are ready. Transfer them onto a beautiful platter and serve them. The best thing about these is that, that they can be made a couple of hours ahead of time. You can make them early in the morning if you're serving them at a dinner party or bring them as dessert to a party if you're in like bringing it to a potluck or something like that. Make them in the morning, put them in a baking tray or in a box and store them in the, in the refrigerator. These taste best nice and cool. Make a hot pot of coffee, a hot pot of tea, and, it, and then go ahead and serve these. Now it's time to take a bite. Mmm. So good. The cake is very nice and moist. The pastry cream is so creamy. Pastry cream and vanilla pudding is my all-time favorite dessert, you guys. I love it in anything and everything. The chocolate is not too sweet. It's so, so good. The whole thing is just amazing. These are the perfect, most dainty little dessert that you can put out at your dinner party. I think you guys are all gonna love these. If I, if I forgot any tips and tricks, and I'm pretty sure there's more, everything is gonna be written on the blog, DemetriusDishes.com. So head on over there and print this recipe. Make these and serve them at your next dinner party and you can thank me later. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today. I will see you all next time. Yes, us.